Medieval Europe was ruled by the dogmatic regime of the Catholic Church. The Church opposed freedom of thought and pressured scientists. People could be punished by the Inquisition simply for holding different beliefs or ideas. Their books were burned and they themselves were executed. The pressure on research in the Middle Ages is often referred to in history books, but some interpret the situation wrongly and claim that the scientists who clashed with the church were against religion. The truth is the exact opposite. The scientists who opposed the bigotry of the church were religious believers. They were not against religion, but against church dogma. For example, the famous astronomer Galileo, whom the church wanted to punish because he stated that the world rotated, said, I render infinite thanks to God for being so kind as to make me alone the first observer of marvels kept hidden in obscurity for all previous centuries. The other scientists who established modern science were all religious. Kepler, regarded as the founder of modern astronomy, told those who asked him why he busied himself with science, I had the intention of becoming a theologian, but now I see how God is, by my endeavors, also glorified in astronomy, for heavens declare the glory of God. As for Newton, one of the greatest scientists in history, he explained the principle underlying his zeal for a scientific endeavor by saying, He, God, is eternal and infinite, omnipotent and omniscient. That is, his duration reaches from eternity to eternity, his presence from infinity to infinity. He governs all things and knows all things that are or can be done. We know him only by his most wise and excellent contrivances of things. We reverence and adore him as his servants. The great genius Pascal, the father of modern mathematics, said that, but by faith we know his, God's existence. In glory we shall know his nature. Von Helmont, one of the leading figures of modern chemistry and the inventor of the thermometer, declared that science was a part of faith. George Cuvier, the founder of modern paleontology, regarded fossils as surviving proofs of the creation and taught that living species had been created by God. Carl Linnaeus, who first systematized scientific classification, believed in the creation and stated that the natural order was a significant proof of God's existence. Gregor Mandel, the founder of genetics, and also a monk, believed in creation and opposed the evolutionary theories of his time, such as Darwinism and Lamarckism. Louis Pasteur, the greatest name in the history of microbiology, proved that life could not be created in inert matter and taught that life was a miracle of God. The famous German physicist, Max Planck, said that the creator of the universe was God and stressed that faith was a necessary quality of scientists. Albert Einstein, regarded as the most important scientist of the 20th century, believed that science could not be godless and said, science without religion is lame. A large number of other scientists who guided scientific history were religious people who believed in God.
These scientists all believed in God and served science with the intention of discovering the universe which he had created. As God decreed in the Quran, they thought about the creation of the heavens and the earth and investigated in the awareness of God. The birth of science and its development were the result of this awareness. During the 19th century, however, this awareness was replaced by a fraud called materialism.